Hey guys, I'm Nate the Intern, and welcome back to Built by Design. So one of the questions I get all the time is how do I model chain in Inventor? Now, chain and sprocket is something that you would always like to have in your model, but it's often very hard because you don't want to spend the time to model each individual link. Here I'm going to show you how to use the Design Accelerator tool to quickly model chain to either existing or modeled sprockets. So let's get started. All right. So in order to apply the, this chain, I need to go in and I'm going to open up this wheel assembly. And after that, I'm going to open up this sprocket. Now chains are applied on a plane. So I'm going to go up and insert a plane and click mid plane between two parallel planes. Now by selecting each side of the sprocket, I can ensure that the plane is inserted in the exact center of that sprocket. Now that I have that plane in place, I can save and I can go back out and you can see that it's all it's there and now I'll return to my frame now as I can see those planes I'll go up to the design tab insert roller chain and then I will go and I'll need to select a different chain type so I'm going to go in go down to ISO 10190 and make sure that it's quarter inch chain or number 25 chain this is pretty close to what we use and we'll do it for the modeling purposes that we have in FRC. Now I'm going to go and select a plane, I'll click on that plane and it inserts now the whole chain will be constrained to that plane. I'll choose an existing sprocket on my drop down menu and now I go and I'll click the top of a tooth as a circular reference. Now it'll that'll tell me that how big uh, my sprocket is and I will, can then go and again choose existing and now I need to go find that sprocket tooth so I'll zoom out orient my model a little bit and zoom back in find that tooth and just find I need to find the top of the tooth click on it and there we go all right so go to the home view and last one is I need to close adaptability so it won't calculate any further once I've done it once. Uh, this will just help it from breaking. And I'm just going to go in and do some naming conventions. I need to make sure to name these drivetrain instead of roller chain roller because I want to be able to delineate them from the other models once I apply all the chains. So once I just hit finish copy and pasting this in here. I'm going to hit OK. And I just need to accept these calculations because there isn't a sliding sprocket, which means that the calculations won't be perfect. I just need to say that's OK. And for now, we're just not going to worry about that. If this was a complete FRC robot, I might design a chain tensioner and use a sliding sprocket. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to go in and I can look at this, but as you can see, as I orient this model, the chain is perfect, but I can still see planes on these gears right here. So that's just an unattractive and bad modeling practice. So I'm going to go out, go to my work plane, turn the visibility off of the work plane. And I am then going to save that part, exit out of it. And now, as you can see, I have finished my model. There's a chain on that sprocket and I'm good to go. All right, so now we've got our chain on our sprockets and we're ready to move on. But what I want you to think about is that every time we use Design Accelerator, we're saving time and energy. So the more you guys can use pre-model components and things that are gonna speed up your workflow, the faster you can go from 3D model to final product. Until next time, I'm Nate the Intern. This is Built by Design. Good luck out there.